like to think about my home and the stuff in it as an employee. When you have an employee, they provide a service and you pay them for that service. You need their service to be worth what you pay them. Your home and the stuff in it is like that too, but instead of paying them in money, you pay it in time. Everything you own takes time to house it, to maintain it, to inventory it, and you want the value it gives you to be worth that time. So let me share with you some ways that you can make your home better employees so I can serve you better. Number one, give up the convenience illusion. We all have places where we leave things out for what we believe is convenience. We leave out a stack of magazines because we're definitely gonna read them soon. Some toiletries in the bathroom sink because we use them every single night. The kids' lunch boxes because we're gonna need them in the morning. A hammer and nails because we are really for sure gonna hang that picture this weekend. I know we said last weekend, but we're gonna do it this weekend. We leave these things out because we think we're saving ourselves time and simplifying our lives. Sure, we may save a couple of seconds by leaving it out, but let's look at the lunch lunchbox example. If I time myself for how long it takes me to put away the lunchbox and then take it out again in the morning, I clock about 10 seconds. Now, is this 10 seconds of time saved really more convenient? I've saved 20 seconds of my life on these things, but what I'm giving up in its place is excess clutter out on my counters. And if you know anything about clutter, it's that clutter attracts more clutter. And I know that clutter is also directly related to stress, anxiety, procrastination, and a lot more. A 2010 study found that those who viewed their home as cluttered, awoke more stressed in the morning, and remained at a higher level of stress throughout the day. So let me ask you again, is that 20 seconds of time saved really worth it? The convenience illusion is saving us time but at what cost? Number two, create drop zones. A drop zone is a designated place in your home for everyday items. You can have multiple drop zones for multiple types of things. One of the most common ones is for the stuff when you first come inside the house. We're talking about things like your keys, your phone, your purse, your shoes, your sunglasses. Typically we drop these things on the floor as we come in or we drop them on the sofa. Drop zones are specifically for these frequently used items where you're allocating a specific place to drop it. The things that you use daily may be even more multiple times a day. The items in your home that need a drop zone will become very apparent to you. You do not need to seek them out. These are the things that constantly end up on the floor, by the door, piled up on the counter. In my home, it's my kids' school stuff, right? Their lunch boxes, their bags, their jackets, the paper, the stuff coming in every single day. And then my husband and I's tech stuff, like our phones, our laptops, our chargers, we're constantly bringing those from his office, from my studio, into the kitchen, and then shoes. Always, always, always their shoes. Once your items that are in need of a drop zone have become very obvious to you, you'll want to create an easy drop zone for them, a place that you can drop them in like 10 seconds or less. Going back to my point of the convenience illusion, you want it to be easy enough to access so that it's more convenient to put them away than to leave them out. For the tech in my home, I have this acrylic stand to house all of them. I invested in a few wire management items to keep my cords from laying out all over the place. Now for my kids stuff, I have a drop zone right by the back door for shoes and jackets. Then I have a second drop zone for the lunch boxes in the kitchen, and this is behind the basement door, which is in our kitchen. Now an effective drop zone doesn't have to be fancy. The key here is functionality over being Pinterest perfect. If it's not quick and simple, you're not gonna stick, stick to it. The key is right in the name, drop zone. You should be able to quickly drop the things off or quickly hang them. Number three, focus on function over perfection. So on that note, the next thing is to make sure that you focus on function over perfection in your home. We've all seen Pinterest perfect, perfect organization solutions on Instagram, on Pinterest, and they are beautiful and great for some inspiration, but the key to good organization is functionality. If it's not easy and effective, Effective, you're not gonna stick with it. So it's fine to try to make things look really pretty and aesthetic, I love that for you, I love that for me, but don't get so caught up in the looks that you let functionality slip. Next up, we're going to talk about the places that tend to end up with excess. So I'm talking about cleaning products, grooming stuff, toiletries, pantry items. These are products that we typically need daily and are common culprits to get cluttered. I buy a new face wash before the other one is used up and now I have two face washes because I didn't initially throw away the old one. We get a can of beans because we can't remember if we already had some. Now we have two cans of beans and then a few weeks later, I can't remember if I have a can of beans. So I get another one just in case. These are the areas 
we easily accumulate excess because we think more is more. These are things that we use and we use them a lot, so eventually it's gonna get used. More usually just leads to a feeling of overwhelm when we look at it, and so these areas don't end up serving us as well, and they end up just kind of stressing us out. And now we're digging through eight bottles of cleaning supplies looking for just the one we want. So focus on being really ruthless in these areas and really just keep the items that you truly need and are really using. I wanna take a quick break here to thank the sponsor for today's video, which is iHerb. iHerb offers a curated selection of products at the best value in categories such as supplements, sports nutrition, beauty, and baby. When I was pairing back the stuff underneath my kitchen sink for this video, I turned to iHerb for my cleaners. I'm using the Modular Lab soap concentrates to refill my dish soap and hand soap, as well as their Mild by Nature dishwasher pods. All of iHerb brands meet strict good manufacturing practices set by the FDA and are verified by third-party labs to confirm quality so you can feel confident in what you're buying. They also have free shipping on all orders over $25 if you are in the US, as well as a 90-day money-back guarantee on iHerb products. If for any reason you are not satisfied with your product, within 90 days you can return the product and get your money back. iHerb also has a great rewards program that allows you to earn credit by referring friends or family and reviewing products. When you check out iHerb for yourself, make sure to use my code, which is Callie. That will give you 20% off if you're a new customer, 15% off if you are an existing customer. There will also be links in the description box down below to all of the products that I mentioned and showed in this video. Okay, and that brings me into my next point really well, which is just because you have the space doesn't mean you gotta fill it. So often when we're organizing or decluttering, we're putting back things back into our space and sort of filling up that space. But I work on being really intentional about always leaving open spaces when I organize and declutter. Cause I know how homes work. There is always stuff coming in. And so I like to anticipate some of that stuff that's gonna come in and have room available. So when something new does come in, there's room for it. And I can give it a home as opposed to having that bursting at the seams feeling of where am I going to put anything new? Next up on my list is to to tackle that spot that fills you with dread. We all have these spots, that spot that you actively ignore. Cause when you look at it, you're just like, no, no, no. Maybe that junk drawer, maybe your basement, maybe the hallway closet. Do you have a Monica closet? Having a spot that fills you with dread is doing you a huge disservice and it's time to tackle it. If you need a sign to do it, here it is. Now, if you have a dread spot, you've probably been avoiding it because you feel like you just don't have the time to do it. I get that. And I recently shared my best tip for this in a video about five minute cleaning. If you are avoiding your dread spot because you just feel like you don't know where to start, try this. Break it down into smaller chunks. Say for example, it's a closet. List out what you need to do. You need to clear the floor. You need to categorize the stuff inside. You need to go through that random box of stuff. You need to go through that other random box of stuff. You need to buy storage bins that fit the shelves. You need to create categories for the shelves. You need to return some of the things back to the places they belong. Speaking of return, three of the things in that closet are things you need to take to UPS to return. List out all of the tasks it will take you to do that closet. And now, instead of just a task of clean the hallway closet, you should have five to 10 smaller tasks. So instead of trying to find time to do the entire closet, pick just one of these smaller tasks. And you can pick away at your dread spot, small chunks at a time. Next, have a routine for laundry. Let's be honest, it is so easy for laundry to overtake our lives and thus our home, and it happens really fast. So if you don't have a routine for your laundry, you gotta get on it. The best way to combat laundry is just to keep that cog wheel going. Whether you decide what works for you is doing it once a day or having a big day once a week, make it a routine. It needs to be something that happens over and over and over consistently. For me, laundry is something I do every day. So often I want to skip a morning, but I always remind myself just keep that cog wheel going. Keep feeding the monster. As long as I keep it moving, it's always slowly pushing along and I don't end up with it all piled up. Next, invest in smart technology. Guys, it's 2023 and there are some amazing products out there to make your life easier and make your home serve you more than you serve it. I'm talking about things like a robot vacuum, a security system that has water detectors for your basement to alert you of any flooding, a doorbell camera, I actually just used my doorbell camera for the first time and it was amazing. We had a return and I wasn't home and they came to get it and if I had missed him when I was gone, I would have had to haul this big huge air conditioner all the way to the UPS store. But luckily, I was able to answer the doorbell, confirm the return, and they took it. In my office, I just got an Echo Dot to help me keep track of shopping lists I need for work to give me the weather to play my music. Alexa, play Noah Khan on Spotify. Smart technology makes our spaces a lot more effective and makes our lives 
a lot easier and thus makes our home serve us better. Next, tackle one thing a day. Here's the thing about houses, caring for them is never ending. It can feel like it's just job after job after job and that's because it kinda is. So I loved adopting the rule of doing one thing a day. I pick one of these tasks that we tend to avoid and I tackle one of them a day. Maybe it's decluttering a drawer, maybe it's finally hanging that picture you've been saying you're gonna do forever, maybe it's taking that stuff down to the basement, taking some returns to the post office, sorting through a pile of paper, whatever it is that you're avoiding, tackle just one of them a day. Next, be ruthless about giving everything a home. If something doesn't have a home, it's just going to sit out. So get really ruthless about having places for everything. By giving things homes, it ensures not only that they just aren't sitting out, but it also makes tidying a lot faster. It helps us create limits for what we have and what we bring in. By creating homes for stuff, we say, okay, I'm allocating this space, whatever it is, to like, I don't know, pens, okay? And now this is the only space that I have for pens. I can't bring in more pens to my home unless they fit here. And on that note, make sure you label your stuff. I always tell you guys to label your stuff, which sometimes feels silly in our own space. Like I don't really need to label stuff where I live, but I'm telling you it makes a world of difference. It just creates a little shortcut in your brain to remind you where to put stuff back. Even if you know, even if you're the one who created that organizational system, we can only have so much stuff in our brains at one time. And by having labels, it makes it really, really, really fast for things to get back where they go, to stay in order, keep those limits, and just ensure that everything is going back where it's supposed to go. And last but not least, update things in your home as your life changes. I think lots of times we get stuck and do certain routines or ruts or things that are just like staying where they're supposed to stay, and we don't update them as our life changes as we go through different seasons. As people, we tend to be pretty habitual. We tend to follow routines. But make sure that you are changing organizational structures and or home routines to better serve you as your life changes. A really simple example for me is by my back door, right? What I need by the back door for me and my my kids is a lot different in the summer than what it is in the winter. In the summer, my kids need changes of clothes by the back door because they're outside a lot more. They're getting muddy, they're doing water play. We also need towels and bathing suits by the back door for that same reason. Obviously in the winter, this changes, right? We need some mittens, we need some hats, we need some cold weather gear. Just because you created an organizational structure or a routine in your home doesn't mean that that's just going to work forever and ever and ever. Our life is constantly changing and ebbing and flowing, so you need to adjust them as you go. All right, my friends, that does it for today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope this video helped you out a little bit. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to yourself and to others, and I will see you all in my next video.